Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for another video this week. I wasn't able to upload last week, but that's okay. I had a very busy week getting ready for spring break. I'm on spring break right now. Yesterday was my birthday, but yesterday was also an anniversary of something that's very near and dear to my heart. So if you can not tell by the title of this video, I'm going to be talking about my five biggest takeaways and experiences and benefits. Yeah, benefits is the word that I'm looking for um, as a result of sobriety. So the 20th um, of every month is my anniversary of sobriety. My specific exact date is August 20th, 2017. I don't know if you can see this very well, but it's my little tracker um, that's on the Marijuana Anonymous app. And it says that I have one year, seven months, and one day free from marijuana or 578 days. So in two more days, it'll be 580 and we're getting very close to that 600 days mark. If you didn't know, I already have another video on this channel where I film talking about my entire experience of having a psychotic episode as a result from smoking cannabis, which sounds very hard to believe for people who've never heard of this phenomenon, but it is a real thing. If you didn't know, what weed is actually, and I'm looking at this word to pronounce it right, a psychotomedic drug which literally means it can induce psychotic symptoms or psychosis. So the one that you are probably familiar with is LSD. LSD, if you do LSD, it's essentially like you are trying to create psychosis for yourself. Um, and a lot of people don't know that weed can also exhibit similar, if not, the exact same thing for some people, and I am one of those people. I had my psychotic episode in 2015, and I've been on a journey of sobriety and quitting cannabis ever since then. I've had several attempts and failures of sobriety, and it's an ongoing life journey. It's not something that I guess I guess it's unfair to call them failures um, because it's a process, like I said. So I am now on like my third or fourth attempt of continuous sobriety. And as you've seen, I've been strong for a year and seven months now. But I would love to make this video about my biggest benefits as a result of sobriety. I think for someone of my age, which now I'm officially 23 years old, um, and I think for I think for people that are in their early 20s, it's very uncommon to think about or talk about sobriety because we essentially assume that people that are in recovery are in like their 30s or 40s. Um, definitely maybe like even late 20s, but early 20s is kind of unheard of because it is much more socially acceptable for this period to be the partying time. It's when people are in their college years or their early career years. They're very social and a lot of experimenting. And I would like to be a voice <laughs> for somebody who's in their early 20s and throughout their entirety of their early 20s has been on a journey of sobriety because I had my psychotic episode when I was 19 and ever since then, drugs have never been the same for me. So I would like to preface this video by saying that I am not judgmental of people who partake in drug use. Um, in fact, that would make absolutely no sense because I'm somebody who's done that before and it would be very hypocritical of me to sit on a throne of judgment. Um, 
If anything, I am the exact opposite of that and I'm very accepting. And I believe we should have a lot more compassion for people who partake in drug use and people who are addicts because we unfortunately have a lot of shame and um, excluding of people who struggle with addiction from our society because we think that that's the way to get people treatment is to shame them into treatment, but that's not the case. So I cannot be the person to tell you if sobriety is right for you. I do not live your life. I only live my life. And for my life, sobriety is a much better, much more beneficial, and much more rewarding experience for me than, say, drug use. If you're coming here looking for somebody to give you the definitive answer of what you should do, only you can do that. But I can speak truth to my experience that might help you, somebody who's maybe also in their early 20s, struggling with the idea of getting sober, wondering if they're completely alone in this experience. And I'm here to let you know that you're not. And I'm here to let you know and validate you if you've been sober or open you up to the opportunity that these are the benefits that you could experience if you have sobriety. So without further ado and so much talking, let's get into my five greatest takeaways. And I also wanna let you know there are so many more that I could talk about and maybe I can make a part two to this video if you're interested, but I'm just going to talk about the ones that I think are the most beneficial and the most relevant for this first video. I also wanna let you know that this video was inspired by an Instagram post that I saw by the user Positively Present on Instagram who created a graphic talking about the benefits of sobriety and I thought it was really beautiful. So I took some inspiration from that and added my own mix on things. So definitely go check out their Instagram if you want to see some of their art related to sobriety. So my first takeaway and biggest benefit, I'm going to, it's kind of like an overall thing, but I'm specifically going to limit to one category is self-growth. And when I talk about self-growth, I think I'm more talking about the idea that you are challenging yourself to something new and difficult um, that not a lot of people take on in their lives. I think when I look back on my year, seven months, and one day of sobriety, I think what I am the most proud of is that in my really challenging and really difficult moments, dealing with my mental illness, dealing with family issues, dealing with relationship issues, school issues, that throughout that entire time, I was completely reliant on my own emotional management. So one of the things that inspired me to quit using drugs is that I realized I had a habit of leaning onto drug use to disconnect myself from the reality of my situation because I was suffering. Okay, my apologies, I got interrupted. But I was in the middle of saying that the reason why I continue to have compassion and empathy and understanding for people who do not choose sobriety and continue to use drugs is because this is a very difficult world that we live in. And I am very privileged, other people are not so privileged. And so sometimes an escape from the reality of this difficult system that we navigate, I cannot pass judgment on that because that is what it takes for them to survive this system. So it's kind of like the idea of self-medication. Um, however, I was getting to a point where I felt like drugs weren't serving me anymore. Specifically, cannabis use wasn't serving me anymore. And I needed to 
learn my own emotional management skills because it was getting to a dangerous point where my cannabis use was causing me traumatizing experiences and literally putting my life in danger because when you're psychotic it it is unexplainable how disconnected from reality and the amount like the limited amount of control that you have over yourself um so when i look back now on my last one year and seven months i am very proud that i was able to work through those difficult and challenging times by myself without using um an escape from reality and i listen to a lot of sobriety podcasts and like reading and addictionologists and stuff like that um and one of the things that spoke to me the most about the path of sobriety and the journey to quitting using drugs and this came from that a podcast that isn't even about addiction but the podcast is led by a person who identifies as being an addict and they said that like life has the toughest challenges for you like the hardest times but it also has the most joyous and incredible times and this is not for all people but just for this person and i identify with this experience as well and they said that when you choose to numb yourself from the challenges from the pain from the suffering you cannot just selectively numb the pain, but you also end up numbing the joy and the happiness and the good parts of life. Now, my second biggest benefit and takeaway from my path of sobriety is my expansive new amount of hobbies and interests. Now that I have chosen sobriety, I definitely have needed more hobbies and things and actions to fill up my time that I normally would have been smoking with something else. So since I've been sober, some of the new hobbies that I've gotten into is I did learn how to knit. I did play some music for some amount of time. I don't really continue that anymore. I'm really into arts and crafts around like stickers and scrapbooking and stuff like that. I've played a lot more video games than I was when I than I was when I was not sober. I've gotten into drawing um, like digital art. I've always been into digital art, but I like kind of went back to that hobby. There was a time I dabbled in poetry. I have a lot more time to make videos now. I was never making videos when I was smoking. It was something that I always said I was going to do or wanted to do, but it never panned out into anything. So much more time for hobbies. And if you are in the beginning stages of getting sober, um, or you're wondering some advice on like when you do get sober, my biggest advice is to start a brand new hobby. I'm talking brand new, something you've never tried before that you can invest the money that you would have invested into smoking or drugs into this new hobby and preferably something with your hands um, and something that occupies your mind so that you can during the time that you would have been using drugs, you can do this new hobby. And if it's something with your hands, the thing about drug use is that it's very ritualistic. And if you can get something with your hands like knitting, crocheting, clay making, cooking, uh, playing an instrument, something like that, you can form a new ritual around this hobby to replace the drug use. My third biggest takeaway, and this is definitely a personal one and it's not fully solid but it is specifically related to my cannabis use and sobriety but one of my biggest things that uh, has vanished from my everyday life um, and I'm talking day to day like on an average basis 
is I have really diminished my amount of shame and guilt for myself. So when I was smoking cannabis, I think one of the most difficult parts about it is how I wanted to hide it from a lot of people and I felt inclined to be ashamed about it and to feel guilty about doing it and I don't think that cannabis users now should feel that way and even if you shouldn't feel that way it's it's a lot harder in practice to not feel that way but almost every time that I did smoke or use drugs I felt very shameful. I felt very guilty, especially thinking about like what loved ones would think about me or like how they perceive me knowing that I partake in this. Um, and literally you could tell me anything <laughs> at the time and now that would be like, you don't have to feel that way. That's not a productive feeling. Like I said, it still would manifest almost every time that I used drugs. So. I'm really grateful that now I don't have that feeling constantly and definitely I have shame and guilt over other, other things. You can never really get rid of emotions, but I'm really appreciative to be out of that endless cycle of feeling shame and guilty about something that I did every day. My fourth takeaway is actually very interesting because I assure you that this could be a benefit for taking drugs <laughs> that someone might try to sell you, but I'm going to say that this is a benefit for not taking drugs and for being sober. And that is increased awareness and consciousness. So I'm sure like there's, I mean, I've listened to people who talk about LSD or DMT, especially hallucinogens, um, who tell you that like, it will open up your mind and your experience and your consciousness and you'll be a different person. It changes you. You'll have more self-awareness about the world around you. Well, I challenge that being sober comes with a whole new idea of self-awareness that you achieve in a different way without drugs because I talked earlier in my first point about emotional management and that's something that I think every person needs to work on, every person, and when you are sober you literally feel all of your feelings like there's no numbing, there's no you know interceding of a drug to make a different feeling it's literally <laughs> you sober your true raw self all of the time and so you become very conscious of who you s truly are without the aid of anything else and i think it can be very helpful to like take a very serious look at yourself in the mirror without any substance that really just gives like a bare <laughs> look at how your emotions surface, what your thought processes are, you know, what your personality is like, all of those things. You become very in tune with yourself when you are sober because but it's also very challenging, don't get me wrong, because you are going to be learning how to deal with these new or old, difficult, challenging, easy emotions all by yourself. So it's definitely not easy by any means, but like I said, it gives you an increased awareness about who you are. Okay, and my final biggest takeaway, um, and this specifically speaks to cannabis users, but I think it can speak to many other drugs and people who maybe have found themselves like dedicating a lot of time to drug use. Um, but my last one is my increased productivity. So when I was using drugs, it was during my high school years, my end high school years and my beginning college years. Um, like my very first college year, really. I didn't use it after my first college years too much, but 
I truly believe that I would not be where I'm at in college with my academic career and with my just like growth as a person if it weren't for my sobriety. So cannabis definitely for me decreased my productivity decrease like increased my like laziness and my apathy i guess laziness isn't the right word but my lack of motivate motivation was like seriously high <laughs> when i was smoking and so when i eliminated that it gave me a lot more time and clarity to focus on my priorities and what i valued in life and so I certainly believe that I would not be a junior in college right now, that I would still be behind on credits or taking leaves of absences or like not getting a high GPA like I am now, not getting a job and like awards and all the things that I've gotten since I've been sober. I really attribute so much of that <laughs> to my sobriety. So, definitely productivity and it's really interesting like the entire time that i've been sober is the exact amount of time that i've been consistently dedicated to school ever since i had my psychotic break i took like a year off from school and it was in august of 2017 when i started fresh at school again and ever since then i've been going back every single semester consistently and my sobriety is a huge huge reason why I've been able to do that so I have a lot more productivity than I've ever had before okay that is everything that I have for this video I'm sorry if it turned out kind of long whenever I get on the subject of sobriety I tend to talk for a really long time because it's something that's not so simple and that can be like succinctly talked about because it's a very personal experience but i hope that anything in this video was helpful to you in the slightest um leave a comment down below letting me know what your biggest takeaway from this video was what you were most surprised to hear me talk about and maybe if you want to talk about being on your own journey, wherever you are, I'm very interested to hear it. But Hakupa I, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so you can get notified of the next video. We're almost at 150 subscribers. So join the family. Come on, subscribe so you can stay in tune with what's going to be happening on this channel next. Okay, I'll see you in my next video. Bye!